Well, it wouldn't surprise me in the least if Apple came out with that product next year. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, we're not gonna be talking about Apple's latest and greatest product, but we are gonna be taking a look at a tool brand that sounds like they took a lesson from Apple's marketing department. So let's not waste any time and start talking about this brand. So this is a tool brand that I have absolutely no experience with, and that's why I'm so excited to dig into this brand today. Now I'd heard about this tool company, but frankly, it was you guys that really encouraged me to check this brand out. And this brand is eye gauging. It's pronounced eye gagging. I don't think so. Well, I suppose you call these rags. So regardless of what it's called, I picked up three items from this brand. So let's start to talk about our first item and see if it's any good. So the first tool we're gonna to take a look at is comparable to the Woodpecker's Delve Square, both the three inch and six inch square. Now these are great squares and they have a lot of attributes and features that I really like, but there's one problem with them. You have to take out a second mortgage to purchase these tools. I think it's pronounced Mort Gage now. As these squares are $230 for the pair. And these eye gauging tools, which look very similar, are a third of the price at less than $80. So let's dig into these eye gauging squares and see how they compare. Bert, hook me up. Did you put this whole thing together with lay screws? Lag screws, yeah. Not made, not made at all. Here you go. Ugh. So this is the eye gauging pair of bench squares, both four inch and seven inch. Let's unbox this and see what it's all about. So the first thing that I'm really impressed with is these squares come in a hard shell carrying case for storage and protection. If we open up this case, you can see it comes with instructions and the two squares. It also comes with a pencil and some extra lead. So let's take both of those bench squares out of the box and compare them to those Woodpecker's Delve squares. One of the first things you'll notice is these eye gauging squares are just a little bit bigger. The larger square is an inch taller and the smaller square is a half of an inch taller. Next, let's take a look at the base or the lip of these squares. If we look at the side profile of these squares, you can see that they have a quarter inch lip on one side and a 3 8 inch lip on the other. Both the eye gauging and woodpeckers have these exact same lips. Now you may have noticed there's also a step on that lip. Let's take a look at that. And this is one area where the woodpeckers varies a little bit from the eye gauging. The woodpeckers has a half inch step on one side as well as a 3 8 and a quarter, while the eye gauging has a half inch as well as a 3 8 step. Now just from personal experience, I can probably count on zero hands how many times I've actually used the lip for tool setup or measurement. And that's because I've got other tools that I prefer to use for those purposes. But if that's something that's important to you, there is a difference between these two squares. Now let's take a look at some of the other features of these two squares. Now, since the eye gauging squares are just a little bit larger than those woodpecker squares, the larger eye gauging square has an extra half of an inch reach for those scribe holes, while the smaller eye gauging square has an extra 3 8 of an inch reach for those scribe holes than the woodpecker's smaller square. Another small difference that may be a little bit difficult to see is you can see on the woodpeckers, they actually have a chamfered edge for those scribe holes, while the eye gauging just has a simple drill hole. And finally, that woodpecker's blade is just a little bit thicker. Thicker than a snicker. With the woodpecker's stainless steel blade being 3.2 millimeters thick and the eye gauging stainless steel blade being 2.1 millimeters thick. Another nice feature that both of these squares have is the ability to measure any angle between zero and 90 degrees. Now, obviously you can always get the quick 90 and 45 degree angle, but you could also use the pivot point on either square to get any angle in between. So if I wanted to get a 10 degree angle, I'd simply pivot my square until the hash mark for 10 degrees is lined up with the edge of the board. So I can simply strike a line and know that my measurement is exactly 10 degrees. Now you may have noticed that the interior of these squares is just a little bit different, and that's because eye gauging has incorporated some predetermined angles into the square. So just like woodpeckers where they've incorporated a hole where you can strike a line at a half inch or one inch from the edge of your board, unlike woodpeckers where they have a one and a half inch and a two inch marking, the eye gauging square has a little notch where you can strike a line right at 45 degrees or 30 degrees right on the holes inside the square. Lastly, on the eye gauging square, there's one other feature that I'd like to show you that I haven't seen in any other woodpecker square. And that is the easy to read ruler that's right on the lip of the square. As you can see on the smaller square, it goes from zero all the way up to four inches. And on the larger square, it goes from zero all the way up to seven inches. 
So with the square on its side, it can be used for things like table saw setup, router table setup, or even determining the depths of your dados or rabbits. So let's talk about accuracy between these two squares. Well, they're pretty darn close. The eye gauging has an accuracy of five one thousandth of an inch running down the entire span of either square, while the woodpecker's has an accuracy of four one thousandths of an inch running down each of the delve squares. Yes, that is accurate. And either one of those measurements is way more accurate than any measurement I need for this workshop. So obviously the last thing that we need to do is to make sure that this tool is actually square. So let's take a look at both of these squares and make sure that they actually work. So we'll start with our small square and move on to our larger square. And that looks pretty good to me. The last test that I did with this square was to compare the accuracy of the scribe holes between the eye gauging and the woodpeckers. And there was no visible difference between either of the squares. In fact, you can only see one line for all the measurements that I did for either square. So for a third of the price of the woodpeckers, I don't think we can ignore these eye gauging bench squares. But these aren't the only eye gauging tools that we're going to check out today. I've got two more sets of tools that we need to check out. And you'll notice I said sets. That's one of the really nice things that I noticed about eye gauging is they sell a lot of their tools in sets of two. I got a set of two for you. What are you doing? Septic tank's full at home, so I thought I'd catch a shower. Oh boy. Can you at least hand me that tool? You bet, cuz. Here you go. Ugh. So this is the 7 and 12 inch layout square made by eye gauging. Gagging. Let's check it out. So once again, with these squares, you're getting another hard shell case for storage and protection. If we open up the box, you can see we have the 7 inch square as well as a 12 inch square. And this also, once again, comes with a pencil and some lead. These squares are a cheaper alternative to some of the more expensive squares like woodpeckers and wood raffic. Now we've covered wood raffic as a cheaper alternative to woodpeckers in a number of previous videos, but I also really like the woodpecker 642. The problem is this tool is super expensive. And because Woodpeckers is so expensive, I only have the 6 inch 642. If I wanted to get the 12 and 6 inch combination set, I'd be looking at a price of well over $230. That's how much my first trailer cost. I know, right? But these two squares only cost $95. Let's check them out and see what they can do. If we look at the side of the squares, you'll notice that the eye gauging has a 3 8 inch lip as well as a quarter inch lip while the woodpecker's only has a 3 8 inch lip. If we look at the other square, you'll notice a 45 degree angle on the lip so that you can draw out your 45 degrees. But 45 and 90 degrees aren't the only angles you can draw with this square. Let's take a closer look. If we take a look at the squares, you can see there's little holes where you can mark out where each degree measurement is, and they're every two and a half degrees going all the way from zero degrees up to 60 degrees on the smaller square and zero degrees all the way up to 65 degrees on the larger ruler. So if I wanted to measure out 50 degrees, I'd take my pencil and mark off where that 50 degree hole is. And then I'd take my pencil and mark off at the very base of the square. Then I can simply connect the two dots to get my 50 degrees. Next, let's take a look at those scribe holes. And just like the woodpeckers, this thing's got scribe holes at every 16th of an inch. And here I've traced out those scribe holes at every 16th of an inch. I first scribed out the lines with the eye gauging and then traced them with the woodpeckers. And as you can see, there's no difference between any of the lines. Now I will have to say I broke my pencil lead a lot less with the eye gauging versus the woodpeckers, which has always been a concern of mine. If we look at the very end of the square, just like the woodpeckers, there's also a ruler that can help you with setup. But I will say that the eye gauging is much easier to read with the blue and the white writing. Speaking of setup, there's also a hidden feature with the eye gauging that I know the woodpeckers doesn't have, and that's magnets at the very base of the ruler. And this is a really nice feature because instead of referencing your throw plate, you'll actually be referencing the table saw table, making sure that you're completely perpendicular to the tabletop. And the seven inch square has two magnets while the 12 inch one has three. There's also one more feature to this square that I've never seen in any other square. And that feature is a center scale ruler running down the length of both squares. From the center, you can measure out to find the direct center of any material you're working with. 
Simply line the measurements up on both sides and strike a line at the exact center mark. And the three extra features with the center scale ruler, the magnets on the bottom, and the extra angles you can draw really make this a good find in my book. But hold up, let's make sure that we're actually square. So let's do the square test on both these squares and see if they're actually usable. So let's start off with the smaller square and move up to the larger one. And I can only see one line there. And with the larger one, hopefully we'll get the same results. And once again, only one clear crisp line. Well, once again, I'm really impressed with these tools from eye gauging. Now let's start to talk about our third tool. But before we talk about that third tool, I'm gonna ask you to do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment. It really does help out this channel. Also, for all the tools we're taking a look at, I'll leave links in the description below so you can go check them out for yourself. If you're interested in some fun accessories like this Ash Pirate shirt, or some tool recommendations and shop updates, check out my new website, www.flindogwoodwork.com. That's www.flindogwoodwork.com. Dear Lord, you sound like a used car salesman. I know, it's embarrassing. I guess I'm just trying to make a buck. I guess I don't have that problem. I bought a bunch of gift cards from some guy I met on the internet, said he's gonna pay me back 10 times over. Sounds like a pretty good investment. Can you hand me that last tool? Let me know if you need me to spot you a buck. Here you go. So our last eye gauging tool of the day is the pair of double squares. Let's take a look at it. So once again, we're getting a killer hard shell case for these tools. If we open up the case, you can see there's a four inch and six inch square, along with the precision measuring rules. So this is a tool that I've never owned before. I've had plenty of tools like combination squares, but never a double square. So what intrigued me about these eye gauging double squares? Well, it's really a matter of accuracy. If we take a look at the ruler inside the squares, you can see how accurate these squares get. The first scale is an eighth of an inch. The second scale is a sixteenth of an inch. If we flip the tool around, you can see a thirty-second of an inch. And finally, a sixty-fourth of an inch. And I'm not sure I have any ruler in my shop that goes down to that level of precision. And both of these squares go down to a sixty-fourth of an inch. In fact, a 64th of an inch is so small, I might have to break out my spectacles. <laughs> spectacles, sounds a lot like test How did I know? So let's take a look at these two simple tools. So other than the size, there really isn't a whole lot of difference between the four inch and the six inch square, other than the fact that the six inch square actually has a level in the frame of it. Now, one thing that always concerns me with precision tools that have moving parts is how rigid they are. And obviously these squares are meant to move. By adjusting the knob, you can move the ruler back and forth. And to tighten it down, you simply twist the knob. And I can tell you from playing around with these squares for a bit, even when you loosen it up and adjust the ruler, there's very little wiggle room between the ruler and the frame of the square. And once you tighten these squares down, there is zero movement. And other than the fact that both of these squares feel very solid and high quality, I'm not sure there's much more to be said about them other than the fact that we need to make sure that they're actually square when they're fully extended. So just like before, I'll test out the smaller one first and then we'll test out the larger one. And I see no variance whatsoever between the two lines. And the same results with the larger one. And I'm not so sure how well this will show up on camera, but as you can see, both of the lines weren't right on top of each other but they're completely parallel, running down the entire length of the line. And that's pretty awesome, and I really like the size of this four inch double square, as it's small enough where you can put it in your pocket or place it in your apron. Well, that's gonna do us for today, folks. I really appreciate you bringing eye gauging to my attention. I really think these are some high quality tools, especially for the price. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. Also, check out my new website, www.flindogwoodwork.com. Until next time, take care as always. He expects me to clean up this place every time he does a video. I guess I should be thankful he got some new rags.